and welcome to my channel. My name is Sam and this is Frugal Listener where I talk about all things dressmaking and today I am going to talk about uh, the sleep set in the Great British Sewing Bee. First of all I'd like to welcome anyone who's new here and um, thank you to anyone who's subscribed. If you are new here if you could consider subscribing and uh, if you enjoy the video liking it uh, and if you want to know of any new videos that I'm recording uh, click the subscription bell below. So yes, if you're interested in sewing, I am uh, recording videos a Monday to Friday of a part, as part of a 100 days of sewing series. And um, on a Sunday, I'm posting uh, videos like this, which will be reviews or plans or recent makes, that kind of thing. So onto the review. So I will just give you a quick flash of the book that I'm talking about. So this is the Great British Sewing Bee Sustainable Style, which was um, made to um, accompany Series 6 and Series 5 of the Great British Sewing Bee. I previously did a full review of the book uh, on my very first video where I um, had made the midi dress uh, and gave you some thoughts of that. So I will link to that for you. Uh, but today I'm going to review the sleepwear set which I made as part of the review series that I did for the Great British Sewing Bee where I reviewed each episode. It was episode five where they did the lingerie and sleepwear week and I made the set for that. Uh, and I promised to make a, a video reviewing it and I'm just getting around to it now. So the sizing in this book uh, is at the front of the book. Um, so this, it just gives you on page 31 and I will insert um, a better picture, a clearer picture of it. Um, but basically, you see there, that's the general sizing that goes throughout the book and then each individual garment has uh, a page of sizing that will give you the uh, what, how, what you can expect the finish, finished um, garment to come up with. So based on the front of the book on page 31, I'm a 37 bust and I am a 32 inch waist. So it would put me between a size 12 really because that says 36 and a half inch bust and um, coming, coming up between a 14 and a 16 for my waist. Because this uh, sleep set uh, has an elasticated waist um, I decided to go for the 14 throughout and I tell, I'll tell you why. Um, if you look at the size sizing on the finished measurements for the sleep set which is here Hopefully you can see that. Um, you will see that there is negative ease in this. Um, so for a size 12, it will only give me a finish, finished um, bust of 33 and 5 eighths. Size 14 would only give me a finished bust of 35 and 5 eighths. And it's not until you get to a size 16 that it's going to give me a 37 and a half inch bust. Now, this sleep set has a uh, a romper um, set option which has been done in a, like a, a, a stretch velour. I've got a feeling when they've written this book that they actually made it for a knit variation. When you look at the fabric requirements it does say that you can use um, a stretch or a woven. We recommend lightweight jerseys with a good amount of stretch such as organic jersey. Um, viscose jersey or wool jersey. You could also make it in a finer woven fabric such as lightweight cotton or silk for a more lingerie like set. But because the finished garment measurements uh, are giving negative ease that suggests to me they haven't taken into account that you wouldn't really want, a well you definitely wouldn't want a negative ease across the bust on a woven garment. So that's my first um, little niggle with it. Luckily, because I'd made the uh, midi dress previously, and I, I, um, I found that to come out a little bit on the big side, I decided to plump for the size 14. So the, short, the shorts part of it fit absolutely fine, um, but I found that the little, the, um, I found that it, the cami top was a little bit snug across the chest. The, my other word of advice on this one is, um, it's a sleep set. Now, I know some people do sleep in the bra, but I don't. So when you're trying it on, you need to try it on how you're going to sleep. 
because I don't know about you, but my boobs don't stay in the same place <laughs> when I'm not wearing a bra and it is quite significant and I'll show you why. It has separate cups. Can you see there? Um, it's quite difficult to see in this fabric, but there's a, a line of stitching across there. And obviously that is going to cut into your slight left. Um, your boobs are exactly above that line. So I would definitely suggest that you try, try it on as you're making it, which uh, is another slight difficulty in it because of the way that it's constructed. So I would definitely, definitely suggest that you make a twile. Um, that one was always intended to be a wearable twile. I'm a little bit unusual in that I will fully make up a garment in a cheaper fabric uh, and call it a wearable twile rather than um, make it in something, a waste fabric. Um, so that to me was a wearable twile, all finished. The fabric cost me a pound a yard or something off the market and I had just over, uh, I think I just have a, had over a metre, I think there was 1.15 metres on there. So it'll cost me about pound fifty. So that's my idea of making a wearable twile is in something, some fabric that didn't cost me a, a lot of money. Aside from the sizing, um, the tracing off can be a little bit tricky as well. Patterns are printed on a large AO sheets at the back of the book. I think there are five pattern sheets that are printed on both sides. Patterns overlap. Um, so you will need to trace. You can't, you can't cut it out because you, you will be cutting into other patterns. So you will need to trace. And um, that's fine for most people. That's not a problem. The problem lies in that each, rather than using one colour for each um, garment, they use, they've used three different colours for this one. I think I know why they've done it. Uh, I think it's so that uh, the pieces that overlap, you, you can distinguish between the pieces that overlap. But from, to my mind, each garment should have its own colour. It's just less complicated. Uh, I will insert some footage uh, when I finish talking about the pattern pieces so that you can, I can indicate exactly what I mean by this. So it can be a little bit confusing really, um, try, trying to trace off I've also found that um, not all the garment pieces are on the same two sides of one AO sheet. Somebody did message me uh, via my blog post for, for the Pussy Bow blouse and parts of it are on one sheet and parts are on another sheet. Now it does say on the top of the sheets quite clearly, uh, there's a little box at the top, it does say what um, uh, what pieces are on each sheet so you should be able to fathom it out but it's just something to look out for. Another thing about the tracing of the patterns is uh, that the waistband is and some of the uh, cuffs I think as well are actually uh, you've got to keep your eye out it's it does tell you to cut on the fold again I will show I will demonstrate that on a little bit of video footage when I've stopped talking about this um, you need to cut it on the fold, you just need to have your wits about it. And the waistband, uh, you actually need to join. So there are two pieces of the waistband that you need to join together. So I'm just showing this uh, pattern layout for you um, so that you can see how many different colours the sleep set um, pieces are in. So to your left here, it's in a bright pink. On For the... Um, front it's in a pale blue and then the rest of it is a dark blue or a purple perhaps so you've got three different colors to to fathom out <laughs> your, your sleep set and finally um, I'm just going to demonstrate here that this waistband has to be cut on the fold. Can you see that fold line there? You just need to keep an eye out for that and also that it needs joining together here. Just a couple of things just to keep an eye out and also this ruler strap here is only one inch wide. There's absolutely no way that you could sew that at five eighths of an inch. On to uh, the sewing up. The sewing up is actually quite straightforward. This book is not aimed at your beginner sewer 
as in it doesn't give you any very basic pattern instructions but it does point you to uh, some of the more intermediate type of uh, pattern instructions so uh, within it it does suggest if you're making it in a woven fabric that you use French seams which I did throughout mine it directs you to a page where it tells you how to do that uh, also there's bias binding on that so my opinion of this uh, this uh, pattern is that it's not for a beginner so uh, you can give it a go if you want because at the end of the day it's uh, pajamas it's a sleep sleep set who's going to see it doesn't matter there's nothing really that complicated in it um, but it, uh, it does say that it's aimed at a confident beginner now I'm not really sure what a confident beginner is you're either a beginner or you're not um, I don't think I'd want to make it as my very first um, project, but if you're feeling brave, go for it. That's what I say. It's a pair of pyjamas. Nobody's going to see any mistakes. Um, just, you know, go for it. It's a great skill builder, is this pattern, if you want to uh, build on, on some basic skills. So you can, there are um, ruler straps in there, French seams, uh, stitch in the ditch. There's a bit of bias binding on there. Stay stitching, you might not have come across that before. There's bus darts. Also, uh, the, the potential for working for, with finer or slipper, slippery fabrics. If you are going to work with um, silk, I wouldn't suggest making this up um, without testing the size first. As I've previously mentioned, the sizing on it is a little bit vague and I wouldn't I wouldn't go straight into some silk, into your best bit of silk or Liberty or whatever, whatever it is. I would definitely suggest twirling it in some fabric that, that you're not bothered about. Number one, um, if you're going to be doing French seams and it doesn't fit, you really don't really want to be unpicking French seams. If you've never done French seams before, uh, I'm doing the 100 Days of Sewing series where I'm going to talk about uh, shortly about Moore's bags and uh, they are just a, a tote bag uh, but there are French seams on that and I think that's a really good way of doing your first French seams because it's a bag and it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I can't link to that because I've not recorded that yet but I think that's a, a good start but I will link to the Moore's Bag site uh, so you can have a look at, at what, what I'm talking about. So essentially French seams you sew, instead, normally on a, a, on a seam you will sew right sides together so the um, seams are on the inside and you can do that with this pattern. I've only made the woven, you can make the pattern with a lightweight jersey as I've mentioned before. If you've got a, an overlocker and you want an easy life, you can do that uh, an, an overlock. But if you would like to do French seams, um, very briefly, instead of sewing right sides together first, you will sew wrong sides together and you will sew them at a, a, a smaller seam allowance. So, so say for example, as in this book, you've got five eighths of an inch seam allowance First of all, you will sew them at three eighths of an inch seam allowance, trim down that seam allowance to around about an eighth of an inch, give it a good press, um, and then turn the seams to the right sides together like you would normally, and sew that at a quarter of an inch, so that altogether you've sewn five eighths of an inch, uh, and that raw edge is on the inside. The beauty, not only are they that look nice, uh, the beauty of it is, is that you've got an extra bit of strength as well. So I'll just quickly show you what it looks like when it's finished on the inside. And there you have a French seam there, down the middle, and yeah, both sides and down the middle. And the um, shorts are done the same way as well. A couple of other th no things to know, what I found, um, Number one, the ruler straps are only a, an inch thick and there's nowhere on those instructions that don't that tell you not to sew at five eighths of an inch. It's common sense, it's, it's impossible to make it, but it's just a word of warning. Um, I think I made mine at, um, I think I went in at an eighth of an inch actually. Uh, you've got very, very narrow straps there. Uh, you don't really want to be making the seam uh, any smaller really. Um, so that's that. There are a lot of straight pieces on, on this 
patterns such as the waistband and the cuffs um, because I had quite a fine fabric rather than cut out the pa pattern pieces or cut round the pattern pieces I measured them off first. I use a mat and a rotary cutter so I just measured them those, those off and cut them round my rotary cutter. It's just a more stable way of cutting. Also if you're making them with a slippery uh, fabric I would recommend spray starch just to stabilise them and perhaps cut on um, cut single layer rather than double layer sometimes that's a little bit easier with the slippery fabric fabric the, because the book is a uh, sustainable style I think they've, they've made the pattern pieces quite small uh, so the back piece is supposed to be cut on in two pieces I just did it as one whole piece I just knocked off the five eighths of an inch seam allowance and uh, cut it on the fold and uh, that for me saved fabric actually better than it did trying to cut out two separate pieces. As I've mentioned before, I actually squeezed this out of a really small amount of fabric. For sizes 8 to 14, the recommended fa fabric amounts 2 metres. And for the sizes 6 to 16 to, two, 16 to 22, it's 2.5 metres. Um, I don't think you'd need that much actually, but. Uh, and my fabric wasn't directional so I could put it I could put it on how I wanted. So I would recommend um, before tracing making as many amendments as you can. I, I would recommend that on any pattern really. If you have sewn a few things before and you know that your bust starts generally need lower in, uh, do that. Uh, if you know you're long waisted, um, you might need to do that on this one, although it is quite long around the waist. Um, somebody did ask me um, would it be, make a good cami top and the answer is uh, it depends on how low you want uh, the back and I'll insert a most unflattering picture of myself wearing it from the back it only just covers my bra strap and I wouldn't go without a bra on that I mean you can do it's, it depends how perky you are but I wouldn't go without a bra on that particular one so there, there is opportunity to um, have a nice finish on the inside of, on this particular one with the French seams and the um, lining around the breast cups as well. So um, you don't have to actually have to finish that. You can just encase that all, all within. Um, so it's, it's a, there is a nice opportunity to make, to, to practice those kind of skills. And on the back here, you've got this, this is the only bias binding strip that's on it. Uh, and as you, you notice, I, I, to save fabric, I, I did that in a contrast fabric. I would also advise to do to use a plain fabric against something patterned like this, this because with it being see-through, you might find that if you try to um, line it in the same fabric, the fabric underneath will try and fight with it, so you'll be able to see you'll be able to see the um, be able to see it on the other side. Another thing I would say is it tell, it advises you to try it on. Um, when you've had, when you've put the back straps on, which is um, quite difficult to do. So essentially, what you do is you it tells you to construct the front. You've got the cut pieces attached to the front part, uh, and you put the facing part, the facings on, uh, with the straps in at the front, and then you construct the back with the bias binding, trapping the straps at the back, at the back which is a little bit of a tricky process because obviously the straps are already attached to the front and this is before you've put the side pieces, uh, attached the sides together. If you are going to do French strip seams and you really don't want to twirl, at this juncture is where I would suggest that you um, baste at five eighths of an inch to check, uh, number one, the fit, again, with or without a bra, depending on how you normally sleep, uh, and the length of the straps. I could perhaps have had another inch or two in my straps, I think, just to allow for droppage, shall we call it. <laughs> so another little top tip is with when you're attaching bias binding, um, this bias binding here, I've sewn from the wrong side. And that's because it, when, with such fine fabrics, it's quite difficult to always catch it on the right side just make sure that your tension is okay on the un underside and that you've got the right colour thread in your bobbin but I always I tend to sew from this side rather than they tend to tell you to sew it from the right side at that side so that's something that I generally do um, and then yeah if you can try if you can try it on 
um, by just basting first, make sure you've got the fit right. Um, another one is if you if you haven't got a great deal of experience sewing, try doing the shorts first. There are a lot less steps to the shorts, so you get a com you get them completed first. And obviously, if you are um, different size at the bottom and to the top you've got the opportunity to sew the bottoms in a completely different size you don't you know if you size 12 on the on the top and and 14 at the bottom there's enough ease on in the uh flare of the at the bottom to ease out um a size or or two really and it's quite easy to to grade the bottom of the cami top out as well it depends on how big how big a difference you've got in your your tops and top and your bottoms i'm usually a, a size difference there is opportunity to, to finish this off really nicely the only bit i did differently was how to attach the cuffs it seemed a real shame to have all that nice finishing with the french seams and then attach the cuffs as they suggest it in the book which is uh fold it in half and attach it at the bottom so that you've got like a raw edge showing um and then you can just serge it or whatever finishing method you prefer so to get a neat finish on the bottom of the shorts, like this, first of all, I um, pressed my fabric, my cuff fabric in half, pressed up one edge, five eighths of an inch, which is your, is your uh, seam allowance. So the other seam allowance to the bottom of the shorts, and then encased all this, the, um, seam, the raw seams inside, and then just stitched along there. So that you've got everything inside and that just gives you an, a much neater finish i didn't i didn't particularly like how they suggested finishing it in the book which would leave a lot of raw edges well overlocked edges and in that way then you don't actually need uh, an overlocker or a serger for this project at all everything everything can be french seamed and the fit and the cuffs are finished that way the inside of the the cami that's all in, encased as well and uh, yeah, you can get a really, really nice opportunity to uh, finish everything nicely. And uh, finally, I would say that um, I've said before, pajamas are a really good way to practice skills on, simply because you're only sleeping in them anyway. But also, if you've got some precious fabric and you wear pajamas a lot, I think um, they're, they're a really good way to use the, fa the fabric. You get more wear out of it. You know, sometimes uh, you do place all this um, enigma or whatever over these precious fabrics and don't either don't use them or you save them for best and you spent a lot of money on them. Um, if you wear, if you do wear pajamas a lot, I mean, just just use them. You know, your, your best, best Liberty fabric or whatever. Use it or your best silk. Use them as PJs. You get your use out of them rather than being so precious about it. Um, that's my uh, that's my advice on on things like that you can either stay stitch or use stay tape uh, just to stabilize that that neckline uh, to stop it stretching out but don't uh, don't miss that step out um, because it will it might gape again it's only pjs it probably doesn't matter uh, but if you're making it as a camisole top then it will it will annoy you probably and um finally just a few words on construction i found that the um back and the front uh, when I came to put them together at the side seams didn't quite match up. I thought that might be something to do with my tracing but I ha do know that somebody else has tried this and they found the same. It could still be, it could be both of us. Uh, I'm not prepared to go back and I've, I've checked the pattern but I'm not prepared to go back and make another pair. I don't need another pair so um, if, if you've uh, made this sleep set and you've had the same um, problem, I think it was about half an inch or so out. So if you've had the same problem, please leave a comment below. If things aren't right, I think people need to know uh, and it's, it's a good way of uh, letting people know. It could, it could just be me uh, that's, that's made a mistake on the tracing there. I'm, I'm not sure. So if you're not too confident, um, I would advise doing the shorts first. There are a lot less steps in the shorts uh, and you will get a quicker finish. Um, they, are, they do come out quite uh, big, in, but I think they're, they're described as um, dance shorts or something. I suppose they're supposed to be that, that way. But if you look at the photographs on me, they do look a bit 
sort of big on me. You don't want anything tight on, on in, in sleepwear, really. Um, and it's not an issue for me, but I could probably gone down a size. Um, I could have probably gone down size 12 on those. Because if it's got an elasticated waist as well, I could have probably got away with a size 12 and perhaps have gone a bit bigger on the uh, camisole top. I should have probably swapped. It's usually the other way around with me. I'm usually smaller on the top and larger on the bottom because I'm not particularly hippie. Um, but I do have a wide waist, so I need not usually not need to grade out at the waist. So a couple of tips to make it a bit of a speedier sew. Um, you can probably do quite a lot of sewing before you get to do any pressing. So you can do, um, you, you can sew your darts, you can do your stay stitching, uh, more, more or less construct all of the cups for the lining and the top. And um, then you can do qu quite a bit of construction on the shorts as well. Um, and you can do the cuffs of the shorts and the rulos all before you, you move on to another process. That does tend to speed things up and make you feel like you're making a bit of progress quite quickly. I wouldn't advise doing that if you, uh, if you, if you don't have a lot of experience in doing things like that, uh, just because you can get easily confused as to where you, ha you are and what, what you've done. Um, but it does give you a sense of achievement when you when you can get a lot of a lot of steps done before you go to um, your pressing and then go on to um, doing your French seams. Like I say, I've not I've not sewn this in a knit. Um, the sizing might be more ac accurate if you did it in a knit rather than the woven. Um, but that that my experience is this the sizing's not quite right in this. So that's it from me. I think. Um, good pattern probably don't won't wear, make it again anytime soon because i don't wear uh, pajamas a lot um in the summer especially um and then it, it's not really suitable for winter it's not enough coverage for winter either um but yeah it's a, it's a nice pattern overall it's just that little niggle of the uh, side seams not matching up and um the seam allowances for the rule loops that you need to watch out for and the tracing and the sizing so <laughs> quite a few little niggles really but they're nothing nothing that can't be overcome um but and i do feel that you shouldn't have to overcome that um but apart from that it, the end result is uh i think is a nice end result uh, and that's it from me next week's video i'm hoping to get that interview with ali from the sewing bee on uh we just need to get our schedules um aligned she works as a paramedic so she works quite a lot of um shifts but i think she's got a few days off next week so if i can get that together hopefully that will be next week's next sunday's video um please like and subscribe uh if you that like uh, this sort of video and i will link to the um, 100 days of sewing series at the end as well um, and I'm talking about sort of sewing on a budget and lots of instant, instant tips there for whether you're a, a beginner sewer or an experienced sewer as well. So far I've covered uh, essential tools looking at sewing machines fabric and patterns and as we progress um, hopefully there'll be more for people who've got a bit more experience behind them. Okay thank you for watching I will speak to you soon. Bye.